so many times successful people have the problem where the goal post moves, right? It seems like measuring on this ideal is this endless race to nowhere because you never can get there. And what that is, is when you are in this gap thinking, this mindset, you end up feeling failure. You end up feeling as if you're frustrated because I can't get there. I didn't get far enough. You're disappointed. Uh, many times it's it's a lower self-esteem, um, even to the point that, that you'd, you'd be shocked how many people that are super high achievers have struggled with depression. Yeah. I'm raising my hand, Jared. I've had that in my life where I'm like, um, some of my mindset goes negative and I'm like, I, I didn't get this done. I didn't do that. And I start thinking about what I don't have, not what I do have. Well, that was Ben Tages talking about the results of being trapped in gap thinking rather than thinking about the game. Hey, everybody, Jared Sebesti, your co-host of Retire Repurposed. Well, on behalf of Ben Tages and myself, thank you so much for joining us here today. Well, there's a popular book written by Dr. Benjamin Hardy and strategic coach Dan Sullivan called The Gap and the Gain. The book spells out a mindset that constantly compares where we are in life and measuring our progress based on an ideal situation where we could or where we should be, rather than looking back and recognizing the progress that has been made. The reality is, is that you are a different person than you were six months ago, a year ago, most certainly three to five years ago. And that growth should be celebrated and taken to heart as wins or gain, which will give you confidence to be content in the present, yet motivated to continue to grow in the future. In this podcast, Ben Tages will explain why gap thinking is so dangerous to retirees, and he will lay out the ultimate gain for a retiree's life. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the show. We are so glad that you are joining us on another episode of Retire Repurpose. Well, just a reminder, before we get started, we have a Facebook group dedicated just for you. It's called Becoming Repurposed in Retirement. Join a growing community of people that refuse to accept the typical American dream retirement. All the latest and greatest input from the shows that we bring to you on the radio each and every week are there. If we mention links, if we mention books, there will be links there as well. So again, join this growing community of people that refuse to accept the typical American dream retirement. Go to facebook.com and search becoming repurposed in retirement. Ben Tages joins me on the show now. And Ben, we've had a lot of uh, really neat shows here the past several weeks. Scott Jagosinski has joined us a number of times. I think we had him on the show four or five times, but we've been talking about really mindset, how we think, uh, getting rid of fear and scarcity, kind of cracking the code on abundant living. And I think this has been uh, something a little bit different, but also really important for retirees nowadays. It is, Jared. I've, I'm back. You know, the nice part is I've had a break from this for, you know, several weeks and uh, it's been really uh, nice to listen to the shows. I like what Scott's talking about specifically um, and that mindset idea. And it's, it seems like you and I both do the same thing as we we're, we're big into personal development. We're big into um, learning as much as we can. And uh, you and I are kind of cut from the same cloth there is that we, we also then, what we're learning, try to apply it to our audience, right? So I've got mostly retirees that I talk to every day in the retirement planning business and, and people that are selling businesses and successful people. And every time I, I, I read a book, I listen to a podcast, it's like, I think this can apply to them. And uh, that's why I'm excited for what you've been sharing um, and what Scott's been sharing the last few um, the last few weeks. And again, I'm, I'm not a health expert by any stretch. So some of the stuff he's talking about <laughs> kind of, um, you know, opened my eyes a little bit, but, um, yeah, I'm excited for today's show as well. If you missed the last several episodes, again, we've had a, a number of guests on the show. We've talked a lot about, again, mindset. Last week, Scott Jagosinski was on the podcast. He talked about cracking the code to abundant living. And, and this is uh, good for men, women, retirees especially, but uh, certainly for about anybody, these uh, concepts apply. But how they specifically apply to retirees, again, we did talk about on, that on last week's show. So if you miss those episodes, go back, listen, subscribe, like, share while you're there. We sure do appreciate that. So on today's show, Ben, we're going to talk about a concept uh, called the gain or really what is gain thinking. And this comes from a book that you and I have read before, but it just so happens that we're reading it again. It's, it's, it's a book by Dr. Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan called The Gap and the Gain. I highly recommend this book for anybody listening, but Ben, why don't you kind of get us started by uh, just kind of giving people an overview as to what this is all about. 
Yeah. So I, again, I'm, I'm reading it again because I've got a few um, folks that I work with that are either selling businesses or retiring that kind of, y- you see the thought process of when people like arrive at something, they start to kind of wonder is, did I do enough? Am I, am I, did I get everything I should have? Did I, have I, have I been the best steward of my time, talent, treasure? And sometimes uh, that comes at a cost when we start to look towards the ideal Mm -hmm. in our minds and, and, and we measure off of where we're not right. And really the idea, this is my interpretation of it is if I'm here today, I can either look at my life and say, okay, how much have I gained you know, since whatever point I measure off that in the past, or I look forward and look short, where am I short? What, what goals did I set that I didn't either make or things that I haven't been able to accomplish? Yeah. In in the book, the gap and the gain again, by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy, he comes out right on the first page and says, the way that you measure your progress is actually backwards against where you started, not against your ideal. And this is a concept that Dan Sullivan really has has utilized over many decades. And for those of you who don't know who Dan Sullivan is, he's the founder of Strategic Coach. I mean, if you think Dave Ramsey's been around a long time, Dan Sullivan's been around a long time, decades, uh, really helping mostly entrepreneurs and, and high achievers uh, just build their practice again, uh, kind of unlocking different uh, different ways of thinking. But this kind of all started because he was he was getting uh, annoyed with one somebody in his group. He talks about this uh, in the intro of the book, but it talks about this idea of where we start, where we are, and our ideals. Talk about that, Ben, a little bit on how you know how Dan how Dan Sullivan kind of even just came up with this whole idea of the gap in the game. Yeah, so obviously he's been a wonderfully successful coach, and there was a, a group that he was coaching, and one individual he just couldn't get through to, and he finally put it up on a whiteboard and kind of came up with this concept of, here I am today, okay, here's this ideal that this individual has set forward. Usually it's comparing to other people, like this is where, where I should be. And, and what he forgot to do, this individual that was so unhappy, was actually look backwards and say, okay, this is where I started. Mm-hmm. And and the, the gap thinking is here I am and, and somewhere in the ideal. Mm-hmm. I'm short. I feel as if I haven't done enough or can't do enough. But the, the gain thinking was really saying, okay, here's where I was and here's what I've all accomplished in this time. So again, when I, we look at um, and what, what he talks about in the book is there's, there's a gap. And when you start to measure yourself uh, and your current situation against this ideal scenario, yeah. you fall into gap thinking, which again puts most people at a place where they're just not happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some statistic out there. I think he mentions it in the book. What is it like? Fourteen percent of a of people surveyed were actually happy, which we Ridiculous. live in like the most yeah. prop prosperous abundant time in human history yet yet the, the, this whole idea of of happiness is such a, a fleeting thing uh yeah the gentleman that he's he's talking about in the book that you were mentioning ben uh, he was a very very successful entrepreneur uh very uh very successful in, in many ways including financial and every time dan sullivan tried to bring up something positive about his growth and his progress he always had something uh, to kind of poo-poo his progress, and that's what was getting him frustrated. But I think that I think people naturally do that, especially if you're a high achiever, uh, where we just we just don't we see where we want to be, and we're just kind of never there. You know, as of the recording of this podcast, we're approaching the end of the year, and even just lately, I also had a birthday too uh, recently. But I'm thinking about you know the goals I set at the beginning of the year, and if I let myself go there in thought, I immediately don't go to like the positives, I just go to the negatives and that would be that gap, gap thought versus the gain thought. Yeah. I, I'm the worst at this, Jared. I mean, I, I, I do it too. And I, I think to myself all the time, it's like this happiness is someday it's out there, you know, and that's a lot of, of retirees. That's a lot of people that are, um, you know, looking forward to retirement, people that are um, looking at, um, you know, whatever transition in their life. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah, I'm doing okay. But someday, somewhere in the distant future is where I get happiness. It's, it's in the future. It's um, I'm never quite there and allowing myself to say, yes, I have accomplished a lot. Mm-hmm. And yes, I am extremely blessed. We're coming into the end of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving time. I mean, we should be 
incredibly happy and thankful people just for living in this country, mm-hmm. much less having you know some success from where we were. Um, I always like to do with people say Let, let's look back and say um, you know even if we're looking at their financial portfolio, their financial goals, and say okay what have we accomplished? Okay, where did we start? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's not measure off this ideal. Yes, that's fine to have that out there, but when we really measure again off of that we should be measuring off of all the things that we've achieved and being grateful i want to come back to that because i think that there is some merit to talk about kind of the 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 financial piece um, to this gain thinking Uh, in the book dr benjamin hardy actually says this he says measuring yourself against an ideal is an endless race to nowhere (laughs) which is which is totally true i think high achievers tend to be very very um, hard on themselves i think that they are probably their own worst critics and, and again, I think that goes back to just kind of the natural way uh, by which we think. And it's probably just a, a flaw in the, in, in the human condition. But talk about, again, some of these some of these symptoms of doing this. You know, it's like if 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 we get stuck in this rut of thought, um, it's it's more than just kind of being a negative Nancy or grumbler. I mean, it, it can really kind of affect uh, your character and your relationships and just the overall atmosphere in your home even. Yeah, it affects everything, right? So our mindset's so important. That's why we keep talking about this. But the way you look at a situation, right, that you can control. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just finishing up a, another wonderful book, um, Victor Frankel, you know, Man Search for Meaning. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. read, read it again. And again, the way you look, you, you can control how you look at a situation. That was part of part of what I took away from him going through a concentration camp in one of the worst situations, but he could control his mindset. So I love this thinking, but I think uh, so many times uh, we, we, as successful people, have the problem where the goalpost moves, right? What you just said is there's, it seems like measuring on this ideal is this endless race to nowhere because you never can get there. And what that is, is when you are in this gap thinking, this mindset, you end up feeling failure. You end up feeling as if you're frustrated because I can't get there. I didn't get far enough. You're disappointed. Uh, many times it's it's a lower self-esteem, mm-hmm. um, even to the point that that you'd, you'd be shocked how many people that are super high achievers have struggled with depression. Yeah. I'm raising my hand, Jared. I've had that in my life where I'm like, um, some of my mindset goes negative and I'm like, I, I didn't get this done. I didn't do that. And I start thinking about what I don't have, not what I do have. And again, that brings me down that, that really that gap thinking. So this, this book has been huge mm-hmm. just in my own personal journey. Uh, if we can flip the switch and be more gain thinking, right? It totally changes our mindset to be, you know, far more positive mm-hmm. and, and we can get some enjoyment out of life. Yeah. I, th- I think if you can look back and really give yourself a lot of grace, empathy, credit uh, to where you've come. Again, like I said, as of the recording of this uh, podcast, I just had a, a birthday last week and I think back to, you know, the birthday party I had last year and, you know, I'm a different person than I was then, and I can I could I could make a list of, of different uh, ways that I've grown and things that we've done, and mountains that we've climbed. You know, maybe not uh, not not literally, um, but it's it's interesting. Again, if you, if you get down in the trenches, we, you forget all of that. But I will tell you, like if you can stay in that gain and really just understand how far you've come and how much progress you've made. Um, in in the book, they talk about some of the after effects of that. You feel satis- you feel satisfied. You feel successful. You feel confident. You have higher self esteem, and you're optimistic. I think the confidence is a really really big piece because I think confidence really comes from achieving something that um, you know you didn't know you could do. Uh, you'll see you know young men when they start lifting weights, you know they get a little more confidence as they as they lift more weights as as you try things and even fail. Um, you, you, you look at those as things that are, that are building those experiences help you and they, they get you to that next level. But again, if we're looking at them as a failure and a failure only, um, it will always get you stuck in so many ways. Yeah. You look at what well, you working out with your, your son, right? I mean, it's mm-hmm. the coolest thing. Um, you know, you're going, um, really regularly with him to show him what's, what his body's capable of. And I'm guessing some of this mindset of let's not look at dad and how big and strong he is. And that's his, that's, that would be a gap thinking, right? I'm not quite there yet, but the gain is look at 
the what we've accomplished together mm -hmm. just in the short six months or whatever that you've been doing that. Look at these gains yeah, yeah. And, and be thankful for what you have. I think comparison is just it, like comparison is the is the root of gap thinking because there's always there's always somebody out there who's more successful, who's farther along in the journey, has more money, has more success. I mean, pick pick a characteristic of life. There's somebody who's got a better marriage than you. <laughs> there's like, always there's somebody always with somebody. more. And yeah. I, that's and and the the hard part and this ties back to the financial conversation, Jared, that yeah. we see is it is so hard to be content. And I know it's not the same mindset, but there's something to that of just being able to be like satisfied. And and this is not like I don't want to grow and I yeah, don't yeah. want to have an abundant life, but I want to be able to say I'm thankful for what I've been given and I, I'm not going to compare it. This goes back to my dirt bike story and I yeah. don't have time on today's show to share that. But again, um, it's in my book and I talk about how I was in that. I didn't understand that at the time, but I was very much mm -hmm. in gap thinking. It was like, instead of realizing I had this great thing going for me, I then turned it around, started looking at what every, everybody else had and wanted that too. Let, let's talk about the finances a little bit. You know, again, we make retirement plans, purposeful retirement plans in our financial firm. We help people uh, make this transition into retirement. Uh, how does this gap thinking versus gain thinking come into play when it, when it comes down to down to people's finances and specifically to retirees. Yeah, Jared, so many times I hear people say in conversations around, am I ready to retire? It's like, well, what, what have other people, what do other people have saved? Or, mm -hmm. you know, am I, am I to the point that, you know, I, 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 th I think somebody down the road might have more or be more prepared. And it always comes back to this idea there, yeah. there isn't a set What's number. Matter? Yeah. What, what does that matter? What they have, right. right? You have to develop a plan specific to your income needs, not theirs. And everybody's different. So again, when we start looking at what we think is the ideal out there, it does cause us to start to really get down this mindset of I'm short. I don't have enough. I'm, um, I, I love the, the quote from uh, Greg McCowan. He says, if you focus on what you lack, you lose what you have. If you focus on what you have, you gain what you lack. And I think what what that, to me, the way I read that is if I'm so busy, worried about how much money I have in the bank or what I, you know, if I'm focused on being short of, you know, whatever business success or whatever it is, and I'm focused on, on that, I'm trying to achieve it. I just may lose time with my family. I may just, that's, that's my interpretation, yeah. but I don't take time to just enjoy what God has given me today, mm -hmm. um, both financially, but also relationally with my family. Well, one thing that this book has done for me, and I read it last year and I'm rereading it again. And by the way, anything Benjamin Hardy right now is just on fire. There are just, he has so many, uh, good books out there. And so again, I, I can't recommend his books in general, um, to you, but it, it helps give you peace along the way. So again, if you can get the gap thinking out, the comparison consumerism type of thought uh, out of your thinking, you just give yourself grace. Say, I'm on my own journey. One of the reoccurring uh, um, sayings in the book is that life um, happens for you, not to you. Because again, this is happening to me. Why is this happening? That's blame and that's gap thinking. Just if you're in the game, you look at every single experience in your life, good and bad, as, a, as an opportunity to grow and to learn. You're on your own journey, your own path. And I think that that's a really, that's a really important concept that uh, people need to hear because what that does in turn is it gives them peace. It gives them uh, the ability to slow down, enjoy, uh, enjoy life at a much uh, slower pace while still having goals. Because this isn't like, oh, we don't compare ourselves to you know where everybody else are, so we have no goals. That's not what we're saying at all. It's just understanding kind of where we are and taking life, you know, at, at every moment as an opportunity to live and to grow. Yeah, you said something in there that I want to go back to. This consumerism culture causes people to get in this gap thinking. It absolutely does. And you look at how hard it is not to fall into that trap for retirees today. It's like, I should have more or I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Mm -hmm. And and I, and I hate that thinking. I think our society continues to train people to think about the ideals that, and what they're painting, mm -hmm. by the way, right. Jared, what they're yeah. painting should be your ideals, not necessarily, um, you know, what really is an ideal and in, in, in your ideal situation. So I think um, so many times just consumerism causes this reinforcement of gap thinking because we, we do, we tend to measure off of what we think um, we need based on what others have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can't think of another uh, transition like retirement that has 
um, all of these societal norms and expectations kind of built into it, right? Yeah, and, and sometimes, Jared, um, we get so um, we get so used to our current situation mm-hmm. that um, we we hardly even realize how good we have it. Mm-hmm. And that, that's the other piece in this book that I took away is this this idea of the hedonic treadmill. Mm-hmm. And I love that thought process. That's the idea that goalposts always move. And for, for many uh, successful people who think, um, they, they think, yeah, once I get to this point, I'll be happy. Once I get to this point, I'll be content. That that psychology behind that is, and I'll just quote the book, it's, it's really the hedonic treadmill is the tendency of humans to quickly adapt where they are and what they've got. It leads to never being satisfied and to constantly seeking the next thing. That is, I mean, in definition, what I see in many times, mm-hmm. people who we work with on the financial side, it's like, I'm, I'm used to this type of living. Mm-hmm. And what do you know? We need something bigger. We need something better. And I'm not trying to be critical of people. I'm just saying I struggle with this too. Mm -hmm. I absolutely thought, oh, once I get this, then I'll be content. Go back to my dirt bike story. It's like, oh, once I get that, then I'll have what I need. But no, I start measuring off again the next ideal scenario. And that causes you to fall into this this gap thinking it's it's almost um it, it's it's um uh, it's really tiring being on that treadmill because as the numbers get bigger as the success success grows as the goals get bigger it's like you have to work harder and harder and harder to basically stay in the same level of happiness and so this is a <laughs> it's an important piece for people to understand because um, this is where people get really burnt out or um, really unhappy even though uh, they likely are experiencing a, a high level of success in many, many ways. Yeah, Jared, and it, it, it's not that the success is bad. It's not that having success, ideals, or goals is a bad thing. Um, I think in, in the book he talks about how ideals or goals are meant to provide direction, motivation, and meaning to our lives, but not a measuring stick. And I think that's where we get wrong, and that puts us into the gap thinking mm-hmm. when we use those goals that which which are achievable but they're not something that we should measure off or create are my happy or not based on how far I am short of the goal we have to measure off of what we've gained well you want to talk about a retirement plan I mean that's basically a goal based plan those are good it gives you direction it gives you something to shoot for again we don't become happy because we achieve the goal we already are happy but growing and having abundance is also makes us feel good and it's a great part of the journey yeah, that's, a, that's the best part of my job, Jared, right, is being able to help people see how far they've come and, and to get them into thinking about living abundant lives, right, mm-hmm. based on, yes, some some goals, but but to enjoy what, what the abundance that they have in their life. So you know, I think uh, one thing that we need to cover, Jared, and this is what hit me uh, more than anything in this book, I, I don't think it was specifically a, um, I, I don't know uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy's faith background. I don't know if he's a believer or not, but I can tell you that whenever I look at whether it be a quote unquote secular book or um, any 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 reading I'm doing or listening or, or learning, I, I tend to go back to the ultimate truth, like capital T truth, which I find in God's Word. And and what I what I was resonating with uh, in this book and what I was thinking through is that how many times don't I, as a Christian person and a, and a guy that um, looks to my ideal as being perfection, realize that I'm never going to reach it. Right. Um, And then when I think of the ultimate gain thinking Mm -hmm. is that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. With through grace. Right. God gave his, uh, you know, God gave his son. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're talking about things to be thankful for is God gave his son so that I, I will never measure up against the perfect ideal. If I'm trying to be, you know, the perfect Christian, I'm, I'm trying to mm-hmm. do everything right. right. I mean, I'm sinful. You know, I've made some mistakes in my life. We all, we all have. Mm-hmm. But when we focus on, hey, the, the grace that comes through a Savior, through salvation, mm-hmm. um, that is, I think, the ultimate gain thinking and the ultimate gap thinking is, you know, I'll never be enough. I think I think uh, gap thinking is really easy uh, in the faith world because just like that, yeah, you, you're you're trying to um, be so righteous and, and uh, that certainly is part of the journey. 
Um, but the ultimate gap thinking is trying to like compare yourself to perfection. And there's just no, there's, it's one thing to compare some, compare yourself to your neighbors or, or, or a business associate or maybe a competitor, but um, it's, it's, an, it's another thing to try to compare yourself to the, the ultimate perfection. But again, I think what you're saying is the gap of uh, the game thinking is understanding all that we have and looking back and saying that you don't have to. Yeah. So what I look at, Jared, when I'm talking ultimate game thinking is Philippians 1, 21. It says, for to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? That's what salvation brings us, the ultimate gain. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this conversation of the gap and the gain. If you'd like more information, just visit our website, retirerepurposed.com. Until next time, I'm Jared Sebesta. Remember, don't retire, become repurposed. We'll see you then. Securities offered through Avantax Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Avantax Advisory Services. Insurance services offered through an Avantax-affiliated insurance agency.